Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at reciprocal graphs and asymptotes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some of these graphs to start with, uh, what they look like and how we draw them, but you are going to have, have to have a good understanding of reciprocal graphs already, and also we are going to be looking at some graph transformations, so you're going to have to have a good understanding of graph transformations as well. But again, I'll link those videos in the description, because obviously we've met those at GCSE level, so just make sure that you are really hot on your uh, graph transformations before uh, getting started on this, uh, or at any point obviously if I go over anything that's a little bit over your head, you can always go back into the description and have a look at some of those graph transformations before moving on with these. But we're going to get started, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're just going to have a look at these two graphs to start with. Now when it comes to a reciprocal graph, hopefully you already recognise what they look like and the shape of them. So if I have to sketch this one on the left here, y equals 3 over x, if I was to do a basic sketch of this, I'd do a basic axis, and the graph goes in the two areas here and here. And that's what a reciprocal graph looks like. Now obviously 3 over x is going to be a little bit more stretched in, in one particular way than 1 over x, but in terms of just doing a sketch, it's more just about the quadrant that they go in and how it looks. Obviously thinking about reciprocal graphs, the idea that it never touches the axes there is really, really important. And obviously it doesn't matter how small we divide by in terms of that x value, the smaller the number I put in, the more infinitely large the value of y will get, and the larger I put in for that x value, the more infinitely small it'll get but neither will ever reach zero and neither will ever cross over the axes. So we have something called an asymptote that we can write in these and when it comes to this type of reciprocal graph we already know, not that we drew these at GCSE, but we know that they never touch the axes. So that's what, what we call our asymptotes. So in this graph here one of them goes along the x-axis and I can draw that in here and if I draw that in and we draw them in with a dotted line my asymptote for that one for the x-axis is y equals zero. Obviously along the x-axis every y-coordinate is always zero and that line is called y equals zero. There is also another asymptote on, on this one and it is going up the y-axis. Okay, It never touches the y-axis as well and the equation of that line is x equals zero. There you go, all of the x coordinates on that line are always zero. So we call that one x equals zero. So on our most basic level, that is what a reciprocal graph looks like, and that's where our asymptotes are going to go. Now over to the one on the right, we're not going to really look at these negative ones as much in this particular video, but it is important to know what that one looks like as well, and it's basically just almost like a mirror image of the one that we've just drawn, okay? Our curve actually goes in this quadrant, and it goes in this quadrant, okay? And there we go, that's what one of those graphs looks like as well, and also the asymptotes for this one are also in the same place. We have this one going along the x-axis here, which is called y equals zero. And likewise, just like before, we have the one going up the y-axis as well, which I've noticed I've drawn not in particularly the straightest of lines there, but there we go, we have one going up the y-axis. And again, that one is called x equals zero, okay? So on its most basic level, that's how you sketch one of these and that's how you label the asymptotes. But we're gonna have a look at some that are a little bit more complicated where they've actually been transformed and moved and how it affects the asymptotes here and where they're gonna go. Okay, so on its most basic level, we're gonna be drawing these reciprocal graphs and their, their sketches and primarily this one on the left on every single question. And we're gonna have a look at how they change and how they're affected by these graph transformations. So let's have a look at one of those now. Okay, so this question says, sketch the graph of y equals 3 over x with a minus 1 at the end. And we'll have a look at that in a sec. It says, showing any points at which the curve crosses the coordinate axes and writing down the equations of the asymptotes of the curve. So let's have a look at this line equation to start with. Now we know from graph transformations that if um, we change the x value, it will move it left and right. And if we change the y value, which is what this does at the end here, it moves it up and down. So minus one at the end, thinking about a graph transformation, and from GCSE we'll have sometimes seen it like this, we might have seen f of x, there we go, with a minus one at the end. And that there is outside the bracket, it affects the y coordinate, and minus one, it does what we expect, it moves it down by one. So if we draw a little sketch of this to start with, I'm just gonna have a look at, to start with, the graph of y equals three over x. So y equals 3 over x, and what does that look like? Okay, I'm going to draw this on pretty much all these questions, and it goes into this area here. Now if I then do this transformation, so I'm going to do this function here, I'm going to take away 1 at the end, which moves it down by 1. We'll have a look at a basic sketch of what that looks like. There we go. So if I move it down by 1, then this part here 
is going to go down below the axes and this part here is also going to move down as well and that's what our graph there is going to look like as a basic sketch. Now thinking about those asymptotes, obviously on the first one here that I've drawn, my 3 over x, and let's just label that other one there. So this one here is our y equals 3 over x, but with minus 1 at the end. Originally, as we mentioned on the first bit, our asymptote across this way, which has the equation y equals 0, has now moved down by 1. So it's going to move down 1 here. There we go, and that's going to move down to minus 1, so y is going to equal minus 1 for that asymptote. There we go. Now obviously the graph here has moved downwards, it hasn't moved left or right, so our original asymptote over here, which goes down, which has the equation x equals 0, has not got, it's not going to change. Okay, So that is going to stay exactly where it is, and we've still got that asymptote there where it never touches the axes. There we go. So x equals 0 is going to stay exactly the same. Now there's one more element that we need to have a look at, because obviously on our first graph, it never crosses over the axes, but now we've moved it down, this one on the left does cross the axes, okay? It crosses over just here at that point. So we need to find out what is that coordinate just there. And there are two ways of doing this, because it either crosses over the x-axis or the y-axis, and at that point there, it crosses over the x-axis, and if a, point, if a graph ever crosses the x-axis, the y-coordinate there is 0. So for that point there, I know that y is equal to 0. And all I need to do is sub that into my equation and solve for what x is going to be. So if I put that in, obviously we're looking at this equation here, y is equal to 3 over x minus 1. So if I put 0 into there, we have 0 equals 3 over x minus 1. I just need to solve that. So if I add the 1 over to the other side, we get 1 is equal to 3 over x. There we go. So 1 is equal to 3 divided by something. Now logically we know that the answer for that is 3. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. But I also just need to keep going with this and obviously just solve it in a normal way because some of them aren't going to be quite as obvious to see. So I can multiply the x over to the other side. So I get 1x or x equals 3. There we go. So I'm actually just multiplying it over. That's quite a nice one because it straight away gave me the solution there as x equals 3. But there we go. That's the point at which it crosses over the x-axis. So I'll just get rid of this and I'll label that on the graph there on my sketch and I'll put that as 3. There we go. So that's how we're going to approach these questions. Obviously we're going to have a look at one more here. We're going to have a look at moving it left and right instead of up and down and how we'll approach one of those as well. So that's our next one. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, so for our next question, it says sketch the graph of y equals 2 over x plus 1, showing any points at which the curve crosses the coordinate axes and writing down the equation of the asymptotes. So let's have a look. Now, if I highlight this equation here, what's actually changed from what, what it would have normally been, which is y equals 2 over x. So if we have a look, y equals 2 over x, and let's have a think about what that looks like. So y equals 2 over x, and I'm always going to keep drawing these little sketches. There we go. Just looks like that. There we go. And this time, there is a plus 1 next to the x. Now that would be, obviously, 1 being added onto the x there. So when we've seen graph transformations before, that would be y equals f of x plus 1. There we go. Okay, 1 being added to the x. That is a transformation inside the bracket, so it affects the x. It does the opposite of what we expect. It moves it 1 to the left. So this is going to move 1 to the left. And if we go about drawing this then, as a little sketch and see what it looks like. There we go. If I move it 1 to the left... This part is going to cross through there, and this other one down in the bottom is going to move to the left a bit away from the axes. Obviously I am only drawing a sketch here, so it doesn't look perfect, but that is all we're doing. We are just drawing a sketch, so I'm just going to label this graph here, y equals 2 over x plus 1. There we go. So if I go about drawing the asymptotes in again, we know previously, obviously, we've got this one going up and down. In fact, let's look at the one left and right to start with. There we go. So this one from the left to the right along the x-axis there, which is called y equals 0. Has that been affected at all in this one? In fact, this time, that one hasn't been affected because it's moved to the left. Okay, So it hasn't moved up and down, so we're still going to have y equals 0 as one of our asymptotes. On to the next bit. Obviously, we have this one moving up and down, okay, which we call x equals 0. And that one has been affected on this particular movement because as we've moved it to the left, that asymptote now is 1 to the left. So it's going down here somewhere. And obviously, that goes through the value now. But if, obviously, it's not 0 anymore. It's more. It's going to move over to minus 1. So that's going to be x equals minus 1. And that's our new asymptote there when it's moved to the left. 
Now there's one, obviously one more thing that we need to find and that's at any point where it crosses through the axes. And as we can see, it crosses through the Y axes this time, just there. And we're gonna have a look at how to find that. Now it's pretty much exactly the same process, but obviously when it crosses through the Y axes, that always has the X coordinate of zero. So we know that X is zero on this point and we can just sub that into our equation and solve it. So we have y equals 2 over x plus 1. Well, if x is 0, we get y is equal to 2 over 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is obviously 1, so that equals 2 over 1, and 2 over 1 equals 2. There we go. So it crosses through the y-axis at 2, and again, I can label that on my sketch and just put that there as a y-intercept of 2. But there we go, that's how we're going to approach these questions, obviously thinking about that just basic sketch on the left, and then whether it's moving up, down, left or right, depending on that graph transformation, and thinking about obviously uh, back to GCSE maths where we looked at graph transformations and functions, and obviously making sure that you are okay with those, and again checking out the video in the description if you're not quite sure on them. But here we go, here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions here, so pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for this first one then, we are moving this curve up by one. We've got four over X and then we've got a plus one there. So that's gonna move up one. So thinking about obviously always drawing that little sketch in, this is what it looks like at the moment as a really basic sketch. And we're gonna move it up by one. So I'll try and draw a little bit better for this one, but it goes up by one. So that's gonna go there and it's gonna go here. There we go, just shifting it up by one. And if we draw in those asymptotes now, we've got the one going across, there we go, which is no longer gonna be y equals zero, it's gonna be y equals one as it's gone up by one. There we are. And our asymptote going up and down isn't gonna change. We've still got it going down the y-axis. There we go, and labeling that as x equals zero. Right, okay, so if I get rid of this little sketch on the left, and we'll have a look at finding that point of intersection with the axes, and as you can see here, it's intersecting with the x-axis on a negative coordinate there, and we're gonna try and find out what that is. So at that point, y is gonna equal zero. There we go. But we need to find out what the x-coordinate is. So if we sub that into our equation, we've got y equals four over x plus one. And if we sub zero in, we get zero equals four over x plus one. We can take away the one from both sides, so minus one equals four over x. And if we multiply the x to the other side, we get minus one x or minus x equals four. And then we can divide both sides by the negative one, and we get x is equal to negative four. Right, and there we go, and we get our coordinate there where it crosses through the axes. So we can get rid of this, and we can label that over there as minus four. Right, there we go, and that is obviously the point at which it crosses through the x-axes, and obviously there we've got our asymptotes drawn on. So if we have a look at our next one then, we've got three over x minus one as our equation. So again, this is, um, in fact, we could have written over here the actual graph transformation. This was f of x, but with plus one added on the end. Obviously, it's not using function notation, but just thinking about those graph transformations, this one here is taking one away from the x, and as a graph transformation, we would have normally drawn it like so, x minus one. So that's affecting the x coordinate, and it's gonna move it right by one. Obviously, doing the opposite of what we expect there with x minus one, it actually moves it plus one to the right. So if we draw a little sketch of this again, I'm not gonna draw the original one, but it is gonna move right to one. So this is gonna to shift to the right a bit, and this one's gonna to shift to the right a bit as well. There we go, crossing through the axes. And again, we can go about drawing our asymptotes in nice and quickly. We can draw this one going across, which isn't gonna be affected. And that is obviously y equals zero. And then we've got the one going up and down, which is affected this time because it's shifting to the right. So it's going right by one. So our asymptote this time, I can just about squeeze that in there. There we go. And that is gonna be x equals one. There we go. And then we just need to find that point of intersection, which we can see just here on the y-axis. Again, it's a negative. So let's have a look at what we get here. So at that point, we already know x equals zero. So we get our equation, y equals three over x minus one, x equals zero. So y is gonna equal three over zero minus one, which is just minus one. And then there we go, three divided by minus one is minus three, 
so y equals negative 3 and we can label that on our sketch there minus 3. So there we go that's how we go about transforming these uh, reciprocal graphs and how we go about moving their asymptotes and now we're going to have a look at some exam style questions and how these sort of differ uh, and the sort of uh, little bits that we need to be having a look at in those types of questions so here they are. Okay, so this question looks a little bit more complicated. It says the graph shows the sketch of the curve with equation y equals f of x. I'm bringing in this function notation now. It says where f of x is equal to x over x minus 2, and x does not equal 2. Okay, or x can never equal 2. And that obviously tells us one of our asymptotes, okay, because if x can't ever equal 2, that is actually telling us this asymptote here, which is drawn on our diagram. Okay, obviously one of the points where it can't go through. Obviously we know that y can never equal 1 there as well with our asymptote. But there we go, it tells us one of our asymptotes. It also says then draw a sketch of the curve with equation where the function of x minus with the function of x minus 1 and state the equation of the asymptotes. And then it also says find the coordinates of the point where it crosses the coordinate axes. Now this is an exam style question. It typically ranges from about 6 to 7 marks for a question like this. Maybe 3 for part A or 3 or 4 for part B. And we're going to have a look at obviously how we approach this. So it says draw this sketch to start with. So we're looking at part A now. Okay, and let's have a look at what happens. So draw the sketch of the curve with the function of x minus 1. So x minus 1 obviously affects the x-axis and it moves it right by 1. And we could refer to this as a translation as well. Obviously if we write that as a vector, we could write that it does the translation 1 zero okay moves it one to the right and zero up and down okay but obviously you don't have to write it as a translation but obviously it's a nice thing extra little bit to think about with one of these so if it moves it right by one we can think about what this actually looks like we know that with it we've got this curve and i'm just going to draw it on there i won't draw it just there actually sometimes i just like prefer doing my own ones that says that that one's two there so it's going to look something like that and then we've also got the other one moving to the right as well which is going to be something like that. Now I prefer just to draw my own diagram and draw my own sketch because when you try drawing over the top of one of them you've got to be a little bit more careful with the numbers so let's just draw our own one uh, and actually just think about what it's going to look like from there. Okay so it's going to go to the right so we need to move it just here and then the other one we can just draw it in like that. Okay, so obviously the point which was important there was where this point here where it's crossing through the axes at the moment, the zero. Um, and obviously we'd move that to the right. So here on my graph, it's crossing through at one, obviously as it's gone to the right one. So this particular one here, obviously, the original curve that we're looking at has already been uh, transformed in some way. Okay, It's obviously not a normal reciprocal graph there on the right. It's already been moved about and the asymptotes have already been changed. So what we're doing is we're actually translating it again. We're moving it into, to an, another new position. But there we go. All we've had to do is move it to the right. Nothing too complicated there. And then we're just going to go about drawing these asymptotes in. And it hasn't gone up and down. So that asymptote there of y equals 1 is not going to change. So along here, again using a dotted line, I'm just going to say here that y equals 1. And I'm also going to then do my other asymptote, which has changed. It's moved to the right, so it's no longer going to be x equals 2, but this is now going to be x equals 3. Okay, Ooh, I can't actually draw that very well. There we go. As best as I can, so x equals 3. Okay, and obviously that's moved to the right. So that's our part A there. We've drawn the sketch and we've also stated the equation of the asymptotes. Okay, obviously that x equals 2 line that we had originally has moved to the right and has now become x equals 3. And that y equals 1 hasn't changed. But now for that second part again, just like before, we're going to find the equation, uh, sorry, the coordinates of the point where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, uh, and obviously it does also cross the y-axis. There are actually two points here. So there we go. That's why this is going to be a bit of an increase in marks here because we've got two points to find. Now this first one isn't actually too bad at all. Okay, we've got this one here, okay, which I'll try and highlight. And actually that one there, we don't really have to do any working out for because originally, and we've got it here, it crossed over at zero. So if that goes right by one, that is just going to move it along to become x equals one. So for that one there, we've got x equals one, and that is our coordinate for that first one. Obviously moving from zero right by one just makes that one. The other one that we have to find is a little bit more complicated, okay? That first one was nice and easy, but this one here on the y-axis, there we go, is a little bit more complicated, although we have just looked at that, so hopefully this will be okay now. Now we know if it crosses through the y-axis that x equals zero. So at that point we know the x-coordinate x equals 0 and we just need to sub that into our equation to find out what the y coordinate is. Now obviously our equations up there we've got y equals or f of x equals 
x over x minus 2. There we go. And obviously what's happened to that is we are doing the function, and we've got it just here, of x minus 1. So if I sub those in to my actual uh, equation for this curve here, obviously x is now x minus 1. So if I put that in the top there, we've got x minus 1 on the top, and on the bottom we've got x minus 1 in place of x, and then minus 2. So that's obviously what the graph transformation has changed in terms of the x value there, but we just need to simplify what's on the bottom because we've got minus 2 and minus 1, and that obviously combines to make minus 3, so we've got x minus 3 on the bottom, let's put that in there. So that's x minus 1 over x minus 3. So that's my new equation, obviously after this transformation, and that's what I'm going to sub this x equals 0 into. Obviously if I subbed x equals 0 into the original equation, it would just tell me this coordinate here um, of 0. And obviously you can sub that in that you get 0 over negative 2, and 0 divided by negative 2 is still 0. But when we put it into this equation, we get a slightly different value. Okay, I'm just going to highlight the one that I'm subbing it into. There we go. Um, because if we sub that in, let's see what we get. We get 0 take away 1 on the top. 0 minus 1 on the top, and we get 0 minus 3 on the bottom, and that is equal to minus 1 on the top over minus 3, and that is 1 third there, negative 1 divided by negative 3 is positive 1 over 3, so it's 1 third. So there we go, that is our little coordinate up there on the y-axis of 1 third. And there we go, That we found all of those points. We've got our asymptotes there. The y equals 1 didn't change, but the x equals 3 did. It shifted along to the right. Our x coordinate, where it crossed over on the x-axis there, is 1, obviously shifting over from 0 to 1. And our y-intercept there, or where it crosses over the y-axis, is a third. And we found that by subbing in the value of x equals 0 into our new equation there. So obviously just watch out for that in terms of this equation here. Obviously just having a look at what's actually changed in the equation, that's that we've got x minus 1 or take away 1 from all the x values. So we just subbed in that, obviously that bracket in place of the x there. We're going to have a look at another one now and see how to approach that one as well. Right, okay, so on to our next question. We've got this graph uh, shows a sketch of the curve with the equation where f of x is equal to 1 over x, but then plus 1. So again, um, a transformation has already taken place. It's already been shifted up by 1. And you can see that on the diagram over here. You can see that obviously it's shifted up by 1 here. And obviously we can't really tell on this bit, but we can tell from that one on the left there as it's now crossing through the x-axis. So there we go, that's that little bit for us to be thinking about. And it also tells us that x is never equal to 0, or can't be equal to 0. And again, that tells us one of our asymptotes there. Uh, and we can draw that in straight away onto the one at the top if we wanted to. We've got this one here. That's one of our asymptotes where x equals 0. There we go. Now obviously this particular one here hasn't give us, given us the other asymptote, but we can find that ourselves because obviously previously the asymptote would have been along the x-axis here, but as the graph has been shifted up by 1, it's now going to be going along here, and that is going to be through y equals 1. There we go, so we can draw that in ourselves anyway, y equals 1. Obviously it doesn't ask us to do that, but in part A here it says draw a sketch of the curve with equation y equals f of x plus 2 and state the equation of the asymptotes. So obviously before we state the equation of the asymptotes for that graph, we're going to want to know what they are on this graph. And so there we go, we've got them drawn in and we can actually go about approaching this on the next step now. And obviously this is the equation of that graph there, and we are going to be obviously changing that in a little bit when we when we plug this value in of x plus 2 in there instead. But let's just draw a little sketch of this and see what it looks like. So there we go, and we are going to move it to the left by 1. There we go, obviously that's affecting the x coordinate. So as a translation again, it would be minus 2, 0, and that moves it left to, thinking about our graph transformation there. So if we move this left by 2, that 1 in the top right there is going to come and cross through the, uh, the y-axis, so that's going to go like that. And this one on the left here is still going to cross through the x-axis, but it is going to move to the left a little bit. There we go. I'll draw a little bit in as best as I can in there, but obviously we are only drawing a sketch. So if I draw my asymptotes in now, that y equals 1 um, isn't going to change. I'm just going to make this a little bit better because I can't really draw that in very well at the moment. There we go. There we are. I can probably fit the asymptote down there now. So that asymptote there is not going to change as it's only moved to the left since our last graph there. So that's still going to be y equals 1. But that x equals 0 one is going to change because we've obviously shifted the graph to the left. So that asymptote is also going to shift to the left as well. 
and that is no longer going to be x equals 0, but it's going to be x equals negative 2. There we go. Obviously, just shifting it to the left by 2 as our graph transformations asked us to. So now, obviously, we've just got our coordinates to find. Now, we just want to have a look and have a think about um, if we were given any originally. Now, originally, we can see it cross through here, but we weren't actually given the coordinate. Although we could go about finding that out, and it's up to you which one you've actually plugged it into, but we could find it out up here. Obviously, at that point there, y is equal to 0, so we could actually just sub that into our original equation and find out what that coordinate is, and that'll allow us to find this one nice and easily because we can shift it left by 2. Although we could actually Obviously, just plug that value of y equals 0 into our new equation, which we're going to write down in a sec. But let's just find it from the first one, just to think about different ways of actually approaching this. So if y equals 0 up there, we've got 0 equals 1 over x plus 1. Take the 1 over to the other side. We've got minus 1 equals 1 over x. Multiply that x over to the other side. We get negative x equals 1. And then obviously that means positive x or x has to equal negative 1. So that value there, we've got minus 1. So we know that if it's been shifted left by 2, this is going to be minus 3. Okay, obviously if it's just moved left by 2. But we can actually go about finding that from our new equation. And we'll have a look at that now because obviously we need to find, to finish this off, that point where it crosses through the y-axis there. So getting our new equation, we've got x plus 2 is the change to x. And if we put that into our equation, let's have a look. We get y equals 1 over x is now going to be x plus 2. And then there's a plus 1 at the end. So again, I could sub that value of 0 into this one if I wanted to now and solve it that way. But actually, I think it's a little bit less complicated just to have done it from the previous piece there. But we might have a look at that in a sec. The main thing that we want to find now is this one here where it crosses the y-axis. And we know where it crosses the y-axis that x equals 0. So we just need to plug in x equals 0 into our equation and see what we get. So if I plug that in, we get y equals 1 over 0 plus 2, which is, which is 2, and then plus 1. So there you go, 1 plus a half is 1 and a half, or 1.5. So 1.5 is that coordinate up there. So let's get rid of that x equals 0 part, and let's just put that in there as 1.5. There we go, and let's just underline that so we know what we found. So there we go, 1.5. Obviously, as I said, we could have actually sub 0 in place of y in this equation to find the uh, coordinate on the x-axis there, and that's absolutely fine. If you did put 0 in in place of y, we'd take away 1, we'd multiply the bracket over, which is a little bit more complicated than the previous one, and then just solve it for x. But again, you can go about doing that if you want. Let's just have a look what we would get if we did put 0 into here. We'd get 0 equals 1 over x plus 2 plus 1. As you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than the original one. But if we minus 1 from both sides, we get minus 1 equals 1 over x plus 2. Now I have to multiply over the x plus 2 as a bracket. So we'd get minus x minus 2 equals 1. Add 2 to the other side. Minus x equals 3. And then that obviously means x has to equal 3. And there we go. It gives us that value there. Um, sorry, x equals minus 3. Well, obviously, minus x equals 3, so x equals minus 3, and that gives us our value there of negative 3 that we got originally. So obviously, just watch out for that. If you can do a little bit of an easier step from the previous one, then go with it. But just so you know, you could have actually done it from that, uh, that equation as well. But let's get rid of that. And there we go. That's how to answer one of these questions. So in terms of the steps that you need to go through, obviously make sure that you can get as much information as you can from the diagram originally. So this time we obviously got the asymptotes drawn on up here in the original part of the question. Let's just highlight where I'm talking about right now, this bit here. Obviously we've got the asymptotes drawn in and also found out that uh, point there, which it crossed through the x-axis. Then we can go about drawing our sketch and changing our asymptotes, and then thinking about any of those coordinate points that have changed, obviously thinking about can we get one easily from the previous part of the diagram, and obviously that just means moving it left, right, up or down, depending on where it crosses through, and then using that process from the start of the video, thinking about if it crosses through the y-axis, x is zero, and if it crosses through the x-axis, y is zero, and subbing that in and using that to solve it as an equation. But there we go, that's how we're gonna go approach some of these questions here obviously these are exam style questions so I've got one for you to have a go at uh, before we move on but here we go here's one for you to have a go at okay so here's your, your question for you to have a go at so pause the video there have a go and we'll go over the answer in a sec 
Okay, so it says here the graph shows a sketch of the curve with equation, and we've got f of x is 2 over x plus 2. So obviously it's already gone through a transformation, it's moved up by 2, and it looks very similar to one that we just talked about. So we're going to have a look at what, what obviously how we're going to approach this question. Let's have a think. So normally our asymptote would have been across the x-axis, and it's been moved up by 2. So this first one that I'm going to draw in here has gone up by 2, so it's not going to be y equals 0, but it's going to be y equals 2. There we go, and there's our first asymptote to draw in there. The next one, obviously it hasn't shifted left or right at all, so we're still going to have this asymptote going up the y-axis, and that's still going to be x equals 0. Now there is one coordinate that we can find, and I am going to find that straight away from our equation here, and that's this one here. So at that point, y equals 0, and if I sub that into my equation there, I get 0 equals 2 over x plus 2. Take the 2 away to the other side, or minus the 2 to the other side, we get negative 2 equals 2 over x. If I multiply that x over, I get negative 2x equals 2. And then divide both sides by negative 2, and we get x equals negative 1. So there we go, we get minus 1 there for our coordinate. Now if we have a look, it says draw the sketch of the curve with the equation y equals f of x minus 3. So that is obviously moving it right 3, it's in the bracket, it changes x and does the opposite of what we expect. So as a translation, that's 3 to the right and 0 up and down. So if we go back actually just drawing a little sketch of this then. Now at the moment, let's just think about what it looks like. Uh, that's at negative 1 just there, so obviously that's going to move along to 2. So that's going to go along here and through the positive part there. And our other one, there we go, still not touching anything on the axes there, but it's moved to the right by 3. Now again, drawing the asymptotes in, let's have a look. So we've got this one going across, and it's not moved up and down, so that's not going to change. So that's still going to be y equals 2 as our first asymptote there. And our other one is going to be uh, moving up and down, but it has actually changed a little bit. Now, I'm actually not going to be able to draw this in very well. It's probably not going to be a very straight line, but there we go. I'll just make it work. There we go. That's our other asymptote. And that's no longer going to be x equals 0. That's obviously moved right by 3, so that's going to be x equals 3. There we go. Now we've got two coordinates to find. One of them I'm going to find nice and easily from the previous one that says minus 1, and that's this one here. Now that was previously at minus 1, and now it's moved right by 3. That one there is going to be x equals 2. There we go. Obviously moving right 3 from negative 1 gives us x equals 2 for that part. Our other part is obviously on the y-axis there. We're going to find that one, and at that point there, x equals 0. So we're going to sub that one into our equation to find that. So obviously we need to find our new equation, because actually x minus 3 is now getting subbed into that. So as our equation is, we've got y equals 2 over, rather than x, now it's x minus 3. And then we've got plus 2 at the end. So as, as we've got x equals 0 at this point, any point on the y-axis, if we sub that in, let's see what we get. We get x equals 2 over 0 take away 3 is minus 3, and then plus 2. There we go. So we've got negative 2 thirds plus 2, or 2 take away 2 thirds, and that leaves us with 1 and a third. There we go, so we get 1 and a third, which I'm not going to write as a decimal, I'm just going to leave it like that. I could write as 4 thirds, or so 1.3 recurring. But there we go, we get our um, coordinate up there, and let's get rid of this arrow, get rid of that. I didn't want to get rid of that dotted line, but there we go, my asymptote. There we are, let's just label that on, 1 and a third, there we are, in place of that there. I can just about fit it on my diagram, but there we are, 1 and a third. We could write 4 thirds or 1.3 recurring, and there's the points at which it crosses over the axes there. And again, like I said, you could have set y equals 0 um, to, as that equation, use that to solve it to find out where it crosses through the x-axis, but it's probably a little bit easier just taking that from the diagram at the top for this type of question. Right, okay, so we're almost finished. We're going to have a look at one more style of question before we move, uh, obviously finish this video, and here that one is. Okay, so this question is a bit of an extension question, something to be thinking about, some sort of different type of graph here, and just how we're going to approach that using all the methods that we looked at in this question. So it says the graph shows the sketch of this curve with the equation, and we've got something a little bit more complicated here. We've got f of x is equal to x plus 2 squared over x plus 1. So that's our equation this time. And I've got a diagram of this particular curve over there on the right. And it says obviously x cannot ever be equal to negative 1, again giving us one of the asymptotes. 
equations. Then it says draw a sketch of the curve with the equation f of x plus 1 and state the new equation of the asymptote x equals minus 1. There we go, so that's quite nice. It's actually told us the asymptote there without actually having to take it from this piece of information here. The next part of the question says find the coordinates of the point where the curve with this, equa this new equation crosses the coordinate axes. So obviously it looks a bit different. The equation doesn't look as nice. Um, but let's see if you can have a go at this one. So pause the video, see how far you can get, see if you can get this correct. It's our last question, and then we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so first things first, it says draw a sketch of this curve with that new equation. So this one here is affecting x, it's a plus one, so it's moving it one to the left, or as a translation, we've got minus one over zero, okay, moving it left by one. So I am going to draw a new sketch of this rather than drawing it over the top. I always like to draw a new sketch, although it's not as nice to draw because that curve part there is not as nice as our previous ones. But it's only going left by one, so we know that it's going to have something like that, moving it left by one. And we're going to have this one here on the bottom, which still touches the axes there. I can just about draw it. There we go, something like that. Okay, obviously remembering it does just say a sketch. Now again, we need to draw these asymptotes in. So we only need to draw the, the one in. Obviously previously it said that there was an asymptote where x equals minus one. And if we draw that in, and it's not the easiest to draw in on here, but that's going up through x equals minus one. And you hopefully can see that a bit better from the numbers on my graph there. So that's x equals minus one. Now obviously this graph is moving to the left, so it's no longer going to be minus 1, it is going to be minus 2. So if I draw that in there as best I can, there we go, x equals minus 2. Let's just actually rewrite that because that's all going over the writing. Let's write that again, there we go, x equals minus 2. There we go. And then it says find the coordinates of the point where the curve with this new equation crosses the coordinate axes. Now again there's one that we can find nice and easily and that's this one here. The other one we're going to have to put a little bit more work into because obviously on our graph over here we can see it crosses through minus 2. And if we couldn't see that from the graph Again, we could obviously just find that by subbing some of the values up top there and actually figuring that out. But as we've got the minus 2 there, that's going to go left by 2, uh, sorry, by 1 this time from 2, and that is going to be minus 3. Okay, obviously just moving that left, that's going to be minus 3. The other part, this one here, we're actually going to have to work that one out, okay, because obviously we can't actually tell from the graph if we shift it left by 1 exactly what that number is going to be. So we're going to have a look at working that one out there. So having a look at this then. Um, uh, it, the change to our equation, we've got f of x plus 1. So if we put that in place up in our equation and see what that creates. So we've got x plus 2 in brackets squared on the top. So that's now going to be x plus 1 and then plus 2 squared on the top and on the bottom. We've got x plus 1, so that's going to be the x is now x plus 1 and then there's a plus 1. And we just need to simplify all of that down. So on the top there, we've got x plus 3 in brackets squared. There we go, x plus 3 squared, we've got the 1 plus the 2. And on the bottom there, we've got x plus 1 plus 1, which is x plus 2. So that's our new equation. And at this point on the graph here, we know that x equals 0. So x equals 0. And we can sub that in into our equation there and just see what we get. So if we sub that in, when x is 0, what do we get? We get 0 plus 3 squared. So we get on the top, we get 3 squared. And on the bottom, we get 0 plus 2, which is 2. And 3 squared is 9, so we've got 9 on the top, divided by 2. And 9 divided by 2 equals 4.5. There we go, so we know that that's going to be 4.5. So we can label that up here, that's going to be 4.5 on our y-axis. And there's that question finished with all our answers there. Uh, and that's it really. There we go. So that is how we approach reciprocal graphs and asymptotes and obviously thinking about obviously we've got a lot of function work going on in these as well. Obviously subbing in functions. Uh, we had graph transformations and we also had uh, obviously just drawing reciprocal graphs and understanding what they look like as well as all this new stuff with the asymptotes as well. So I will link all the videos obviously for functions, for graph transformations, for reciprocal graphs, all in the description below as a reminder from all those topics from GCSE. But there we go, that's your new topic there. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.